the number 3000. Originally, I wanted to do a special video for 3000 subs. Unfortunately, I was not able to do that. Instead, this is a tour video where I'm gonna show off some of my miniatures that I have out on my shelves and the miniatures that I'm currently using in my game. If you guys have any questions about the miniatures in the video, please ask them in the comments. And again, thank you all so much for subbing to this channel. Right off here is a station that you're probably familiar with. I'm gonna go into detail later about the paints and stuff that I use. Here is one of my storage cabinets where I have all my projects that I'm working on, including this great little Kenku merchant from Ral Partha. I have to complete his assembly and uh, get him painted up. Here is an art project from my little owl bears. If you notice, uh, these guys are all slightly different, but they're all based on the original owl bear sculpt. Shelf number one, you can see I have a bunch of pre-painted stuff from Pathfinder and D&D. &D. A nice enlarged uh, Dwygar there. I thought it interesting that uh, these two miniatures looked slightly alike. The one on the left is a painted miniature from Dungeon Dwellers. Some Kengu. A uh, Warhammer <laughs> goblin in the back there. And a repainted Roper figure. Some interested pre-painted stuff. We have a gin there that I repainted a little bit. Uh, we have a Monster Hunter figure that I happened to find on eBay for a very good price. This is pre-painted, and I think it looks pretty good. I used this as a gem eater in one of my campaigns. And then we see the difference between the newer D&D &D demons with some of the Lords of Madness demons. Some more pre-painted stuff. We have a Star Child of Cthulhu. We have a Golem Dragon. Bunch of cool things. Finally, on the bottom, the huge Pathfinder miniatures. The only set of huge ones, I believe, that are officially released except for the expansion stuff. The Treachery Demon. And then we have a McFarlane dragon. Now these are pretty cool. They're they're very tough to find at a decent rate, but uh, I you know they had so many variations of these McFarlane dragons. But I think they became collector items because I haven't seen very many of these around. This one, of course, works well for a fire dragon submerged in the lava. We have another McFarlane dragon on the bottom shelf. This one with a D&D sized guy on there. I probably got this one cheap because the little weapon was broken off even though this is new in the package. And then we got some stacks of D&D &D tiles, the Pathfinder beginner set, and a old D&D &D basic game for the 3.5 edition. I like the, I love the dungeon tiles and I know they just re-released them. And then we have the big old Reaper giant dragon tyrant, which I am not comfortable painting yet. I wanna get some more experience. Here's the other big shelf. Right away, you will probably notice this weird miniature here. This is actually a uh, this is actually a Hellboy 2 miniature that came with the special edition of the DVD. Uh, so interestingly enough, I spent ten dollars on mine, and then I found another one at a garage sale for twenty five cents. Here is the D and D dragon figure from the electronic game. I actually found this for free at a garage sale. 
And this weird oddity, I don't know what this is. This is like a giant cockatrice or a chicken dragon or something like this. I don't know what this guy is. If you know what that miniature is, please let me know in the comments. We have the shelf here with a bunch of pre-painted, uh, pre-primed miniatures. Mostly uh, pre-painted dragon stuff. Some interesting miniatures there that I'm primed up and ready to paint. We have some more owl bear miniatures and a bunch of uh, miniatures that I painted. See some Descent uh, Undead Lions there. Barges, as they're called. Let's have some more, uh, you know, looks like this is a, mostly a collection of uh, pre-painted and uh, stuff that I badly painted. And here we have the collection of giant miniatures. And of course the big old uh, chain golem there. And finally we have the gargantuan white dragon as well as this guy. This is actually a mage knight ogre giant thing. A very cool miniature. Uh, the paint jobs on these very wildly. I got real lucky with that one. And finally we have a couple little sets of terrain here. These drawers are mostly terrain and painted miniatures. There's some pre-painted stuff, like that drawer there. There's, uh, I believe that came from the craft store. And, uh, but most of these are stuff that I actually kind of painted up myself. This is a little Hearst Arts miniature here, so it's a desk with some books on it. We have a cast of a Pathfinder uh, doorway that I painted up sort of badly. Uh, we have the very weird uh, dead unicorn brick, <laughs> which was a result of some uh, attempting to uh, do some uh, stuff that didn't work. We have a bed with another little bit of uh, cloth on it, and we have my favorite bed, which has the wolf pelt on it. That wolf pelt from Lady, Is Lady Isabella uh, Molds, I believe. Yeah, I, I made a bunch of copies of beds because I want, like, you know... I want the full, you know, tavern setup. And for some reason I was really obsessed with just putting like bits of uh, cloth on tables. <laughs> so I have a whole merchantile setup in this drawer for some reason or another. And finally some uh, clockwork. Uh, tiles that I sort of custom made for a campaign where there was a door that was on a timer. Here we have some Hearst Arts stuff kind of mixed up. So we have a somewhat normal looking door on one side, but a set of cracked metal doors on the other. And then of course some uh, just scenery here that you've probably seen before in some of my other videos. And this is actually a pre-painted little bit of uh, well stuff, which actually looked pretty nice. Here's a lovely little coffin with a skeleton peeking out. On to the next drawer. This one uh, actually seems to have some mismatched uh, Warhammer terrain. Uh, that's actually from Lord of the Rings, not Warhammer. Uh, some custom stuff that I made, some Reaper bones that I painted up. Real nice. And then this last drawer here is mostly just more Reaper bones and uh, painted miniatures from the D&D board games. Lovely Reaper bones bartender. A zombie from D&D. Here's another little thing that I take on the go. So this is all the terrain that I'm using currently in my campaigns. Of course, we have all the important monkey. Uh, we have a green stuff bed. Kind of like a monster bed that's all disgusting. It has bones and worms in it. Then we have a resin copy of that same bed. You can see the resin copy has a little bit more detail. We 
It's just some regular wood tiles. I believe most of these are plaster casts. Well, not plaster, but dental stone. This is a resin cast I made. As you can tell from the blank back. It's very beat up again. Uh, I'm not taking very good care of these. Uh, you really want to prime them carefully. And of course, here we have an example of what happens if you're using dental stone and you don't take care of stuff, it's gonna break. And then we have some resin casts of some uh, carpets and another wolf pelt. We have uh, pre-painted uh, braziers there. Little manhole cover. Then we have a D&D &D pre-painted miniature. The big sarcophagus. Very evil looking. Then we have some uh, Hearst Arts mixed with some Lady Sibella designs. A little uh, musical instrument on a plinth or however you call that. Then we just have some random bric-a-brac. We have a Reaper uh, Bones miniature mixed in with, I believe that's uh, Lady Isabella designs again. Random dungeon decor, as it were. You'll notice that the... Uh, um, oh yeah, and the big uh, evil fountain thing. This was a head of a miniature that I tried to do a cast of, and the body did not work out, but the head worked out fine, so I made an evil thing. And we have, from the Conan board game, just a pile of skulls. And again, this is one of the first Reaper Bones miniatures that I painted. I did not prime it pop properly, and with handling, the white started to show through. Little signpost, a lever, which is always uh, good to have. I need to make a more durable version of that. We have a lovely table made from her starts stuff and painted to look like wood grain. And finally, we have a Mimic wrapped up in <laughs> tissue paper uh, because he is kind of with the <laughs> terrain rather than the other miniatures. Just because generally he's going to be popping up where their terrain is. Here we have some stuff that I've painted throughout the years that I have in a padded case to protect it. We have a, a lovely Drow Sorceress. I don't know the name of this character. That's a chainmail miniature. Very nice. As you can tell, my paint jobs on some of these aren't very good, but uh, chainmail stuff works out really well, even if you have a basic paint job. A lovely classic goblin there. We have another drow swordsman. Very nice. I'm going to take a look at the mantic work here. Where I tried to do a little design for his shield, make him look all cool. This is a D&D uh, &D chainmail edder cap. I actually really liked the paint job on that one. I did a more classic color scheme as well. Very creepy miniature. Speaking of creepy miniatures, uh, I don't know what these are called. These are D&D chainmail. Uh, there's a name for these creatures, and it escapes me at the moment. But they're like the blind, cave-dwelling creatures. Uh, and these are some of the coolest sculpts. They look really nice. And finally, one of the gnolls, or gnolls, from chainmail. Very cool looking sculpt. He's got the flayed human face on his shield. And finally a rock elemental which was dropped. And thus I'm gonna have to repaint. With these Chessex cases you have uh, two levels. So here's the second level for this. As you can see, there's a bunch of Warhammer uh, metal miniatures. There's some uh, plastic miniatures in there as well. And, of course, more chainmail stuff, because I love the chainmail stuff. Here's a plastic Warhammer Skaven miniature. This is from the Island of Blood. 
meat and potatoes when it comes to uh, miniatures, along with a mantic skeleton, which is really nice with the crow eating his what little bit of flesh is left on him. A very cool miniature. Even with simple paint jobs like I'm using. Uh, and of course, we have a skeleton here. I think this is Ral Partha? I'm not sure. I love this miniature, though, because it's, it's just a skeleton with a giant sword. Very cool. And here's the case I'm showing off that this Stanley case, you actually need to flip the switch or else it won't open. <laughs> I just forgot to do that before. As you can see, this is the case that I use uh, for daily taking my miniatures to games and whatnot. I kind of made my own padding here uh, so you can kind of see some of the more fragile miniatures I have in there. This is a Hearst Arts skull that I allowed to the resin to kind of overtake the mold a little bit. So you're left with a skull that's in a little bit of blood puddle, which is cool. Here's some uh, kind of a combination of Hearst Arts and other stuff to make a little camp miniature. Here's a Reaper Bones evil sculpture thing. Very cool. And here is the, the good version of that which could be used for many things in-game. Here's that wizard that I painted before from the cheap fantasy toys thing. And here's a uh, big Cthulhu miniature from the Bag O Cthulhu. I have not checked Miniature Market. Here's the smaller version. They used to have bags of Cthulhu for cheap on Miniature Market. I'm pretty sure they're sold out now, though. Here's a Hearst Arts uh, skull on a platform good for a trap miniature or just a marker here's a multiple uh it's a, like a it's a dice that you used to do location and i mainly use that for warhammer but i sometimes use it for D. &D. here is a water weird miniature of course there's just the base of it which looks like an unassuming uh you know well and then the water weird you can just put it in there so you can have the water weird pop up and surprise your players. That is a cool miniature. Pace setter games, I believe. Here's just some more debris miniature stuff, which I really like. And then of course I have my uh, my little uh, mechanical pencil that I like to use in my games. Uh, they're expensive, but frankly, you get the big thick .7, uh, you know, pencil lead and it's very nice oh hey here is a bunch of ghoul miniatures that i found these are pre-painted ones that i got uh from uh factory seconds that were all missing the arm so i replaced the arm with an oversized shield and here is a stonehaven miniature a dwarven guy this is one of the first miniatures that i took a little bit of time painting to make look nice uh, i wanted to do nice simple design and he turned out okay so there's a partial collection video of the miniatures that are out on my shelves and the miniatures that I'm currently carrying around to my D&D games. I am still working on the video that I was going to do for 3K sub, so keep a lookout for that. In conclusion, all I can say is thank you, and I will be improving the content on this channel in the future. Have a great day, and as always, thank you for watching the video.